Okay, we are going to look at written response questions part two, and here is our key. So fossilized remains of a plant were found at a construction site. They contained one sixteenth the amount of carbon-14. Determine the approximate age of these fossilized remains. So I have to understand half-life. So if I start with the amount of one, after one half-life, I would have half of it left. After another half-life, a fourth. After another half-life, an eighth. After another half-life, a sixteenth. Oh, finally got to where I am. So how many half-lives did that take? Here's what the important thing is. The arrow is the half-life. I don't want to count the number of numbers. I want to count the number of arrows. So it took one, two, three, four half-lives. How long is a half-life? Because it says how much. Okay. Let's go to the reference table. Let's find carbon-14. It has a half-life of 5,715 years. So 5,715 years is one half-life. But it wasn't one half-life. It was four. So I'm going to take 5,715 times four. So I can do that in a calculator, remember? Like, make it less painful for yourself, right? So 5,715 times 4 equals 22,860 years. There we go. All right, so I'm going to skip the reading, go to the question. Based on table H, what is the temperature of the sample of ethanol? Okay, so I know I need table H, so let's look real quick at table H. Okay, I've got ethanol, and it said, uh, what is the temperature? So if I'm trying to find the temperature, I, I need the vapor pressure. So let's go back to the question. Um, the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the pressure on the surface of the liquid. The heat of vaporization of ethanol is this. A sample of ethanol has a mass of this and is boiling at one atmosphere. So I'm at one atmosphere, which is this dotted line. Because see how it's labeled 101.3 kPa? But 101.3 kPa is the same as one atmosphere. Okay. So... I'm going to go across until I find the, the line for ethanol. So go across on this data line until I get till I hit ethanol. And then I need to go down and I need to read that temperature. So from where that dotted line hits, go down. So this is 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So about like 78 degrees Celsius. Calculate the minimum amount of heat required to completely vaporize the sample. Um, and you must include the numerical setup and the calculated result. So we're doing heat of vaporization. So we need this formula, Q equals MHV. So Q equals MHV. I have 65 grams. My heat of vaporization, can't look it up on the periodic table, I got it. I mean the reference table, it's got to tell me because it's not water. The only one it tells me right here is water, okay? So it gave it to me, 838, so Q equals, and this is in joules per gram, so my answer will be in joules. So I have the correct numerical setup, but now I need to answer it, so I need... 65 times 838. And that is going to equal 54,470. 54,470 joules. Okay, so here's a reaction. Identify the type of organic reaction. So let's look for functional groups. Here's a functional group. Here's a functional group. Well, this is water. 
Let's go and look at table R and see what these are. Okay. So, COOH. Oh, that's an organic acid. And this has C double bond OO. That's an ester. Oh, brilliant. It made an ester. It's on the product side. That's a sterification. Right? PS phases. Those are your options. Polymerization, saponification, fermentation, addition, combustion, esterification, substitution. Write the molecular formula of the organic product in the equation. So organic means it contains carbon and hydrogen, so I'm doing it for this one. Molecular formula, it means I count, and I put it in this order, C, H, O. Count how many C's. God, don't forget this one. One, two, three, four, five. C, five. H. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of these C's is missing here. So let's do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two O's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oops, well, that was six because one of the C's was missing. So C6, H12, O2. C6, H12, O2. Draw the structural formula for the unidentified reactant in X in the equation. All right, so let's look. This has one, two, three, four C's with a double bond O and an O. So this has one, two, three, four C's with a double bond O and an O. This H was pulled off to start the water, okay? So that means I know for sure I have what's over here, which is C like this. But what is the other part I need to make water? An OH. So it's an organic acid and an alcohol that makes an ester and water. So I had four with the double bond O and the O. That's this whole part, right? And then I need two C's on this side and then I need the OH, which is the other part of water. And there we go. All right, in a titration, uh, complete the equation for the titration reaction by writing the formula of each product. Okay, so let's start it. KOH plus HCl. Acid plus base yields water and a salt. So what's the salt? Well, the OH and the H made the water, so what's left for the salt? KCl. Show a correct numerical setup for calculating the molarity of the KOH solution. We use titration equation. So that is MAVA equals MBVB. Since they both have one OH and one H, it doesn't get more complicated. So what do I know? I know I have this amount of base, this amount of acid, and that molarity of acid. So molarity of the acid is 1.22. The volume is 10.00. The molarity of the base is what I'm trying to find. And the volume of the base is 15.65. And that's it. Eh, eh, stop, stop, stop. Do not calculate. If it just says show a correct numerical setup, stop there. Done. Identify one physical change that takes place in this investigation. So I got to look for a physical change. Um, a dripless wax candle is masked then lighted. As the candle burns, a small amount of liquid wax forms near the flame. So a physical change is melting wax right 
or the wax is allowed to cool. So we're cooling wax. Okay. State one observation that indicates a chemical change has occurred. Well, there is what? What are the signs of a chemical change? Is there a gas produced, a color change, burning, right? So burning. Right? The wick was lit, right? Okay, so there was burning. That's a chemical reaction. If something is burning, it is always a chemical reaction. All right, let's go here. It says, complete the nuclear equation for the decay of AM241. So, AM241. Well, I, I need the bottom number. Where do I find it? Here, it's way down here. So we're 95. Okay, and it says um, decay and do I know what kind of radiation? Oh, I do. Alpha decay. So what does an alpha particle look like? Do you remember? If not, you have a reference table which will help you. I usually write it this way instead of writing the alpha particle. So I'm going to write this. So 4, 2, H, E, plus something. I need a number, a number, and a symbol. What number? Well, I do 241 minus 4, which would be 237. I could do it in a calculator, but trust me. And because 237 plus 4 it needs to equal 241, and something plus 2 equals 95, that's 93. Now I need the symbol. So I got to go to the periodic table, find the symbol for 93, which is N. Okay, state one scientific reason why AM241 is a more appropriate radioactive source than francium-220 in a smoke detector. Well, what's the decay of this one? 433 years. So let, let's look up francium-220. Francium-220, where is it? up here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it has a half-life of 27.4 seconds. That would not last in a smoke detector at all. That is a terrible choice. So why is it a better choice? AM241 has a much longer half-life. Right? So it's going to be used, uh, it's going to last much longer than Francium-220. Explain in terms of particle behavior why smoke particles cause the smoke detector alarm to sound. Okay, so let's look right here. Um, the Ameri um, americium, which undergoes alpha decay, has a half-life of this. The emitted alpha particles ionize gas molecules in the air. As a result, an electric current flows through the detector. When smoke particles enter the detector, the flow of ions is interrupted, causing the alarm to sound. So why smoke detectors cause the alarm to sound? The smoke particles block the flow of current. This causes the alarm. What is the oxidation number of nitrogen in NO? So what is the oxidation number of oxygen? Negative 2. So if the oxidation number of oxygen is negative 2, what does nitrogen have to be? Well, N plus O has to be 0. And if oxygen is negative 2, what does nitrogen have to be? Positive 2. 
Write the electron configuration for an atom of aluminum 27 in its ground state. So ground state, you just literally go to the periodic table and you're going to copy what you have. 2, 8, 5. So ground state, 2, 8, 5. Now write it for an excited state. So easiest way to write it in an excited state is take an electron and bzz, bump it up to a higher level. But you can't add more electrons. You just got to move one that you had. So I took one of these and bumped it up. I still have 8, 12, I mean 10, 14, 15, 10, 15. I still have 15 electrons. I can't change the number of electrons. I just want to move it. State, identify the negative ion produced when NaOH solid is dissolved in distilled water. That is a base. OH negative is the negative ion. Write the nuclear equation for the decay of carbon-14. So carbon-14, I need the atomic number, which is 6. And I need to know what kind of decay it is. So I need to go to the reference table. Carbon-14 has this type of decay, which we go now to table O as a beta particle, which is an electron. Okay. So that means I get 0, negative 1, E, plus I need a number on the top, a number on the bottom, and a symbol. Well, this is 0, so that has to be 14. Be careful! This is a negative 1. What do I have to add to it in order to get 6? Because 7 plus negative 1 would give me 6. And then this, I need the symbol. Go to the periodic table. Atomic number seven is nitrogen. What color is brown cresol green after it's added to this? If you forget what this is, remember, look here, it's a base, right? So a base, um, when we talk about the pH scale, seven in the middle, bases are over here, acids are over here. All right, so that you had to know. So I'm going to look back here. I'm going to look for brown cresol green. So brown cresol green right here. It means if I follow this color pattern below 3.8, it is yellow. Above 5.4, it is blue. Well, since a base is above 7, which is above 5.4, it will be blue. Explain in terms of collision theory why the rate of a, a chemical reaction increases with an increase in temperature. There are more effective collisions. It's always why the rate increases when temperature increases. Explain in terms of electronegativity why a PCl bond in a molecule of PCl5 is more polar than a bond, than a PS bond. Well, in terms of electronegativity, it's more polar if the electronegativity difference is greater. I don't even have to do the subtraction. It literally told me which one was more polar. So the electronegativity difference is greater in PCl5 because, oops, which makes it, not because, which makes it more polar. All right, and then we have this. Calculate the density. Ooh, a flashback, the beginning of the year. Density is mass over volume. So density equals mass over volume. Well, I have a volume, but I have moles. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I have to do two things. Look at this. Mole calculations. Moles is mass over gram formula mass. So moles equals mass over GFM. I'm given the number of moles, 
Uh, mass is what I'm trying to find. What's the gram formula mass? Neon. What's the gram formula mass of neon? I look up here, right? And Twenty point two is my gram formula mass. Well, this actually should be easy. If I have one mole, it's this. Because this divided by this would have to be one. So my mass is also what I, my gram formula mass, right? Which is 20.2. My volume is 24.4, right? So that would be my density. So I would do this calculation. Twenty point two divided by twenty four point four. Zero point eight two seven eight six eight eight. How many significant figures? Three, three, okay, it's a, three is the lowest, so one, two, three. Look at this number, round it up, 0 0.828. Density is in uh, grams per, this one is liters, right? Because that was my volume measurement, right? Grams per liter. So my final answer right here. And there we go. That was the second part.